OK， 大家早上好。今天是呃、uh, ，Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is the last day of the summer Davos. Uh, I'm, uh, I thank the organizers for giving us this opportunity to discuss something related to uh, dreams. A、uh, welcome to、uh, China Dream Factory. As a matter of fact, before we get started, I'm think I've always been thinking whether there is a A、uh, dream factory in China, or whether China is、uh, ready to have such a factory. Over the last、uh, six or five years,、uh, we have seen uh, at uh, the、uh, summer Davos, our attention was focused on manufacturing economy of China,、uh, the, and、uh, the impact of real economy in China on the world. And today, well, finally. Uh, in 2015, we have come. We have the opportunity to address the issue.、Uh, apart from manufacturing、uh, TVs, iPhones, and、uh, the daily necessities of、uh, which are for、uh, consumptions all over the world,、uh, whether、uh, China needs to have、uh, ambitions、uh, in the、uh, cultural terms,、uh, media. Uh, entertainment fields.、Uh, in those aspects, China will also contribute to、uh, the world、uh, in commensurate with its、uh, economic prowess. As a matter of fact, China has become one of the largest、uh, consuming country、uh, in terms of culture and entertainment.、Uh, before we get started, I talked with Mr. Gong Yu, the founder of ITE of China. I said that、uh, over the last few years, the TV,、uh, the media websites、uh, have、uh, emerged in China to some extent, which have uh, uh, impact the price of、uh, TV films、uh, of the world. Compared with three years, as he said, some of the TV films、uh, and the televised、uh, sports,、uh, when the Chinese operators. Uh, renew the contract with foreign providers. We would extend. We would add one zero. That is to say, we have achieved ten times growth in less uh, than ten、uh, years. So, to some extent, the market in China、uh, has produced significant impact on the world. However, when、uh, accepting the import products, whether Uh, China has the opportunity of、uh, going global,、uh, using、uh, taking advantage of soft power uh, culture uh, to uh, establish a new image, a country image, and also the industrial structure.、Uh, we are very pleased to have this opportunity uh, uh, of the attendance of the five distinguished figures from、uh, different industries. We actually we have two group of the panelists. On my right hand side,、uh, on the left, on my left hand side,、uh, they have, they already have had their、uh, dream factories: Li Rigang, Li Li Jing, and Gong Yu. Well, the other two are representative of our、uh, observers of、uh, factories, dream factories. And perhaps、uh, one hour later, you will you would、uh, be thinking of setting up your own dream factory. So.、Uh, Uh, Mr. Li Rigong,、uh, he is、uh, very familiar with all of you, and recently he has a new title.、Uh, that is, he is uh, the uh, he has a web.、Uh, he uh, engaged. Uh, he is responsible for an investment platform, one of the largest、uh, in terms of the uh, uh, investment. That is a CMC Capital. And in the in, me, in the media community, he is a very influential figure.、Uh, for the last two decades, he also also serves as an important bridge between China and the foreign market. He is a pioneer to some extent, so to speak.、Uh, sitting next to him is、uh, Madame Li Jing. I still recall that、uh, at a dinner six years ago, she said、uh, she has some big idea.、Uh, that is. As a TV pre,、uh, announcer,、uh, she said、uh, she would like she wanted to create her own business. So today, six years later, today she has her own、uh, fact, dream factory.、Uh, she 
she's a La Faso uh, uh, actually uh, some fake sites which has nothing to do with me and uh, which is a tabloid website, which is different from me. Actually, she has two heads. She is uh, the uh, CEO and chairman of uh, La Faso. And uh, Gong Yu, uh, within this um, media community, in uh, very short, uh, very few years, she uh, were, she became from an engineering student to the uh, one of the most influential figure. Uh, exercise its impact on the pricing of the uh, media uh, port portals, as he has his own users and consumers. Then sitting t next to uh, Mr. Gong Yun is uh, Professor Chen Wanying. Uh, she's a professor from Ho Hong Kong University, uh, the chairman of the Journalism and uh, Communication Center. Uh, in the meantime, she is also uh, uh, the social media expert of WEF. And uh, a moment later, uh, I would like you to make some comments on the strategies of the previous three uh, companies. And the last, but not the least, of course, is a uh, foreign voice, uh, Olivia, Olivia Flores. Uh, his title, he uh, his title currently is uh, publicist. Uh, he's from publicist. He's a senior uh, uh, president, and actually he's been in in this uh, business for many years. And uh, uh, in the uh, twenty uh, ten years ago, uh, he was uh, the CEO of the Financial Times. So. Uh, either the, uh, either his uh, observations or his uh, direct experience. Uh, he has a very uh, w a very uh, good wealth of experiences. Well, uh, first of all, uh, let's start with the question for Mr. Regan. Uh, in back in twenty twelve, uh, you is is that you who? Uh, 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 transform the Hollywood Dream Factory to an uh, East uh, Dream Factory. Well, actually, uh, the uh, agreement actually was uh, sponsored uh, or signed actually by Vice President, the former Vice President Li Xi Jinping, and you are the first uh, who brought the Dream Factory to China. So when uh, t discussing a Chinese uh, Dream Factory, is it the right time now? Uh, thank you, Mr. Li Feng. Uh, this is a very interesting uh, topic and also uh, something we have been thinking within this uh, media community. Um, frankly speaking, uh, based on my personal experiences over the last few years, we still have a long way to go. Uh, the fund, uh, my fund, uh, has a very extensive cooperation of the world. With a f we have a joint venture with Fox, uh, IMAX, and Dream DreamWorks. Uh, actually, now we are working with, with it in the animation films uh, with 300 staff. Uh, ten, um, of one tenth of them uh, coming over from uh, Los Angeles. The, um, Kung Fu uh, uh, Panda uh, will be um, public, will go public. And of course, we have some project overseas in New York. We invested in the opera uh, theater of uh, uh, Wall Street, uh, Broad Street, Broadway. And recently, we are going to also make another, uh, com created a company uh, in VR, a virtual reality. So those are the uh, the new uh, projects. Well, coming back to the uh, question you raised, uh, whether China is ready to have uh, its own uh, dream factory. We have own power base, uh, power house, where we can export our contents. Uh, indeed, 
uh, this is uh, uh, there is still a long way to go. Well, what is what are the what is the current status of China? Actually, China is now using its strengths for the exchange of the cultural contents, including its uh, core pro uh, technologies. Uh, you can see that uh, the uh, when it comes to consumption of media uh, entertainment like uh, media websites, uh, which is uh, developing fast. Uh, rap rapidly. That is to say, we have a lot of uh, contents have been licensed by other countries uh, at the rate of tenfold, and also some of some of uh, the invested uh, media factories. That is uh, around 2015, uh, which is uh, we we think is a tipping point. Uh, before that, uh, the. Foreign uh, providers regarded China as a developing country uh, at a low price. Many uh, copyrights uh, uh, competitions. China is a, a developing country. Uh, several days ago, we were doing uh, some of the license, content licensing. Now, uh, the price has gone up to 50 million instead of 5 million. I, I asked why. He said that my copyright uh, in the Nor Nordic countries, uh, they have only 20 million people, while well, still have the same price. Well, for China, with such a large population, uh, which is uh, uh, the same uh, as the same as the Nordic countries, so at least China has been regarded as uh, advanced countries. So China will not be regarded as low-priced countries. And another big change is that uh, as China market is expanding, uh, it will have some impact on the production uh, or the uh, value propositions on the part of the providers. For instance, in Hollywood, uh, where they regarded China as a rival country, as a evil country, but now it has been uh, that uh, phenomena is reducing as uh, they do not want to offend China. Uh, that is the influence of the market or the power of the market, uh, which has led to some changes in the value propositions and uh, the pricing. Well, what is the way uh, out in the future? I think the creative contents of the Western system uh, will need to be adapted to the realities in China or uh, to be uh, localized in China, I think that is still a long way to go, including in the TV uh, television field. In China, we have a lot of films, a lot of TV uh, programs uh, which have taken the Western format. Uh, this is not simply a, an inspiration. I think that they need a sort of a industrial process. Well, I think still a long way to catch up. 对，就是那个你提到这个梦工厂的话，其实我在我们讨论，因为我们早上在开玩笑说，到底是中国梦工厂呢，还是中国梦的工厂？但显然在谈。We are discussing whether it's a Chinese gym factory or is something else. I think we need to look at the reality. Well, currently speaking, I think that the overall markets in China, to some extent. The market can influence the price, whether it's for the Hollywood content or for content from other markets. The price will fluctuate according to the content. Like uh, for any of the products in the Chinese market, whether for mining or if the demand is high, then the price will go up very quickly. and. Today, when we look at the culture products, it's the same thing. So, nowadays, when we are talking about Chinese contents going abroad, I don't know whether it currently is a mature timing. And Gong Yu, in the recent years, every time when I saw a new publication, and I can see that the price will go up. And because Ai Qi Yi is the largest, one of the largest provider of the online content, and um, we have seen some uh, very good television series and movie contents on the website. 
So, in your opinion, do you think that China is going through an adjustment period? And how do you look at the future prospects of the Chinese market? Because you've mentioned that the users of uh, iQiyi will spend on average two hours watching the content on your website. Well, going global actually is a very interesting topic. Um, as you've mentioned that I was major in um, science and engineering. So whether it's for building a website or anything else, the motivation now would be different from that of 20 years or 30 years ahead. The internet will play a very major role and the internet will increase the efficiency of communication, uh, especially in terms of the content and the video. Uh, in order to have a smooth streaming, we need infrastructure, we need the uh, bandwidth, we need a lot of uh, human resources in it. So the improvement of technology will have a huge impact on the improvement. So when we talk about going global, so first of all, we need to understand what is going global. Well, first of all, we can talk about technology. Uh, you know, the Chinese people are smart. We have seen a lot of smart graduates who have studied abroad and who have worked for Google and um, Microsoft, a lot of those excellent talents have come back to China. So in terms of a technology going abroad, I don't think there's a problem. But how important is that? Well, the first batch of people who go abroad is those content purchaser those people who brought the copyrights of the Hollywood television and uh, from Korea TV series. So the first step of going global is to buy those contents. And secondly, the second step in terms of going global is to recruit those people who have expertise in the foreign contents and foreign TV series and uh, film manufacturings to recruit those talents back to China. Well, uh, currently in the iQiyi, we have the interaction between TV and Internet, and we use those talents a lot. And this is the second step. This is something that I can think of. Is it the right step? Yes, but it's not the core step. The real going abroad is to export our content, our value, our views, and our opinions on the world. Maybe the, the uh, view of world is something very big, but what I'm thinking is that we should export our thoughts and value. And in order to achieve that, there's still a long way to go. There's the language barrier, there's the culture barrier, there's a barrier in terms of concept. So which makes the going global very difficult. So how we can do it? It's like a dream for us right now. Well, first of all, we need to take advantage of what we are good at. For example, for people like me, we are good at spreading our network globally. Uh, when compared with three years ago, the user's experience of uh, iQiyi is completely different. Before, it's impossible to view iQiyi in Manhattan. For those of you that have uh, experience of traveling, you will know. And in Silicon Valley, it's not working well. And in Taiwan, in Hong Kong, maybe in some areas it will work, uh, some areas it doesn't work. But to last year, we have been successfully expand our network globally. and the users can have a very smooth streaming. So that's the first step, infrastructure. Secondly, content. Well, we need to, we are hoping to cover those 40 million or 50 million Chinese who are living abroad. But one of the problem is that a lot of them are no longer speaking Chinese or even they have difficulties in the understanding Chinese. But still, we wanted to go abroad. We need to learn from our experience and especially those hard lessons. And then thirdly, we should consider, you know, different cultures, for example, uh, people who speak English, their cultures, but that will be our third step. But we don't have a very specific plans about it so far. So Mr. Gong Yu, when he talks about his plans and future um, 
expectations, he's always being very cautious. So you've talked about that you want to cover those 40 to 50 million Chinese who are living abroad who may or may not speak or understand Chinese. Well, it's a very ambitious objective. So when I talk to Gong Yu, I have the feelings that as long as for those content that are allowed to import it into China, then you would like to bought the copyrights of those contents. So my next question is for Li Jing. Um, when you see that Gong Yu has purchased the best contents globally, do you feel stressed? Does that squeeze the margins that you can have? Well, Mr. Gong Yu has a very long-term perspective. But for me, I don't realize that starting from when, I don't really watch TV anymore. Except for uh, the necessity of learning. Well, for most of the time, I watch videos, I watch TV series, online and I think that it's a very good experience because I can have uh, access to those contents everywhere and um, it's not necessarily related to my work and uh, just a while ago I was back from Los Angeles I don't have a lot of opportunities to uh, travel globally I and when I go abroad, I've met a lot of friends and many of them are 18 or 19 years old and they ask for the photo with me and I'm feeling very curious. Well, for those people, they were born abroad. How can they know about me? Well, they know me because of my interview, because my interview are those most popular contents online. For example, uh, we interview those most popular stars and when they watch those uh, interviews, they can always see my face and when they see me in Los Angeles, they can recognize me immediately and they ask for the photo. So either it's for um, video content, video uh, websites. Well, for me, I've uh, started to work for uh, TV stations when I was 21. And um, when you ask me to talk about the Chinese dream, well, I think in order to achieve a dream, you need to have a step-by-step -step plan. At first, I worked for the TV station, and then I start to feel that I hate it a little bit. And then I realized that I cannot do without it. And then I feel the um, the desire or the the dream that to work on the website content. So this is the process. And I remember that the first TV series is uh, the Jing Li. And um, at that time, the TV show is very popular. So um, a lot of my personal experience is related to TV station. So that it helps me a lot in my career. So, for the private uh, company, when I see the startup of the video websites, I am very optimistic. And for me, I don't hope that we are um, doing the business on an uh, equal basis. I am hoping that we can attract uh, attract more sponsorships, but um, you know, for us, the profits, the profit model is a very difficult one because um, when people have the money, they want to buy the American TV series content. They want to buy content from Hollywood and uh, Western countries, and they are always focusing their eyes on the most excellent content. Well, I personally would feel that. Um, One day in the future, the uh, local 
content manufacturers will be respected. And uh, currently, uh, the profits that we are having are mostly from the TV, traditional TV stations. So back to the uh, topic that you've just raised about the price increase. Well, if you are only relying on buying other people's content, then if the price goes up, then um, the profit model, the business model cannot be sustainable. So I am hoping that we can build a much more equal level playing field. Um, it's not that we, we are hoping that we can work together to have an integrated um, industry chain. I remember that uh, several years ago when I signed a contract with the TV station, it's the copyright belongs to them, even it's for the programs that I produce. So I asked, why is that? And they just told me that it's the copyright belongs to them as long as I uh, cooperate with them. But the business model is completely different in the, in the US. Um, and a friend of me, uh, uh, my told me that actually when I work with the TV stations, if it, the content, if the product is developed by myself, then I can sell the copyright to anybody I want. Yes, indeed, I see that it's, uh, it has become a problem and I've heard a lot of complaints about the same issue. Um, it, it seems to me that uh, I think the soft power that we're discussing now, I, I think China is very much want to push in the soft power, but it seems to be very difficult. There's an increasing, I think, uh, out of balance in terms of uh, a large amount of uh, foreign programs and the products flood into China, I think which is a good thing. On the other hand, I think you know, it's very difficult for Chinese products, be it entertainment or media product. I still view, I think the media industry, uh, the impact on media industry in China is not really incompatible with the power of uh, the Chinese political power and economic power. So do you really think it is time, China is not ready to talk about dream factory? Yes, I do. Um, I really think that uh, when you look at the history of uh, all um, um, great nations that have uh, become um, very powerful uh, economic um, uh, nations, they have also developed control and media and entertainment um, and become a, a powerful uh, nation in that respect too. Um, of course there are language and there are cultural barriers, but I think um, it should not be an excuse not to uh, really invest in, uh, I think it is the time to go from a hardware to a, or hard power to uh, manufacture, you know, manufacturing, etc., infrastructure to uh, soft power. It is the time for several reasons. One, all media and entertainment uh, activities in the West are seeing a huge uh, transformation because of the digital wave. And they are all asking themselves, uh, how can we adapt to this new digital world? Uh, and I think when people are asking fundamental questions about their future and their business model, they are also looking for partners. And I think uh, today, uh, with the technology you have, with the uh, amazing domestic market that you have, you can create partnership uh, in the West. Uh, that's the first thing. The second thing uh, is that um, the technology is making it so easy to um, reach uh, tens of millions of people uh, at one time, which we couldn't do almost you know, 15 years ago. So there's the channel the, 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 that you can use to, to do that uh, is now available and will be more and more available. People are watching TV on um, iPhones or mobile phones in general, uh, smartphones. Uh, they are watching TV everywhere. Um, video is, is for the new generation. Is, is something extremely powerful. 
Uh, that's why they recognize you <laughs> also, because they, uh, you know, they, they, they do consume now uh, all those contents uh, on mobile equipment, um, iPad. So, yeah, I think there's a, there's a sort of a convergence of factors that, uh, to me, means that... Uh, uh, let me give you one example uh, of um, language and cultural barriers that uh, should never be obstacles. Um, you know that France and Germany have been fighting for quite a long time, unfortunately. Um, now there is a very good channel, TV channel, that has been, um, which is a joint venture between yeah. the, the Arte it, it's called Arte. Arte, okay. It's a very high quality channel. I watch it very often. And you have programming from Germany uh, with the French subtitles and programming from France with the uh, German. Uh, and it works very well. It's a very high quality channel. Why can't we do that with Chinese programming and any other language and uh, country? I, I'm, I'm sure it is doable. OK, I think Olivier is very and optimistic. I think Olivier is very optimistic. I think Olivier is very optimistic. I think Olivier is very optimistic. I would like to ask Professor Chen, I still remember two years ago, the British Prime Minister Cameron uh, visiting China uh, uh, met with Premier Li, and they have very, had a very casual talk. Uh, which was widely reported. Uh, he said uh, many uh, British TV lovers in China. Uh, what is the film they, they made? Uh, what is uh, uh, Sherlock Holmes? Sherlock Holmes was uh, filmed very slowly, was done uh, so whether uh, he would ask uh, uh, the British producers to uh, shoot mo to uh, develop more uh, Sherlock Holmes uh, TV series because China can't wait, uh, was impatient. Uh, whether that uh, we can see a question that uh, domestically in China we have uh, like um, Madame Li Jing, uh, she's complaining. Uh, that whether Chinese local TV producers and directors uh, could also, there are many constraints on the Chinese local uh, artists to produce um, best uh, um, co the contents. I think the we can't. Uh, the Hollywood films are still quite dominant. Uh, nobody can and uh, take it out, take it down. I still remember that uh, in 1960s in China, Indian films was quite popular in China. And we don't have a, a channel. Whether there are some basic conditions are not yet available for talking about China's dreams factory. Are you as optimistic as Olivia? Well, frankly speaking, I'm quite optimistic. Uh, they are very. Those uh, previous three are very uh, conservative or modest, to some. Uh, in other words, because uh, the question you raised, uh, China, we have a local talent market, and also some conditions are out there, uh, which are very favorable to the productions. But they still need opportunities, like uh, the military parade is uh, very important. Uh, it was an, uh, televised exclus exclusively by CCTV. Uh, regardless, if you are given an opportunity for doing a uh, live cast, it would be very interesting. Uh, well, the current thing is uh, whether we can make you all, uh, all means uh, to tell our own stories, the Chinese stories or the ancient stories. Uh, I think this is uh, uh, the uh, real meaning of going global. And uh, we have technologies, of course, many platforms and channels where uh, we uh, where 
we need uh, content, uh, long uh, TV, long programs or short programs which can be viewed on cell phone in one minute. I think the market demand uh, is uh, growing. We have talents, we have market, and the uh, opportunities are, are there. The important thing is you know, how can we combine all those factors, factors together. Another uh, favorable condition is that uh, we have a tradition. Uh, uh, we have some very good uh, uh, historical content like Mulan, uh, which was uh, uh, done several years ago, of course, in a foreign style. And we also expect some uh, Kung Fu films uh, will be produced uh, from the uh, China's angle, uh, which can also be integrated with the world. And of course, the market demand is diverse. Uh, compared with the U.S. films, uh, we have a Chinese film which uh, in, comp in competing with uh, the uh, uh, U.S. Hollywood films. Uh, so we can say we have our own uh, conditions and also we have our own demand. The important thing is how can we tell the stories to others, especially our historic uh, the, uh, stories in the past. Not only uh, films, uh, virtuals and non-virtuals, or written or video, or some digital uh, content uh, will be uh, displayed uh, in a way uh, which uh, can be understood by others. I've been living in the United States for 20 years, uh, where, where I saw a la large demand. So what is the biggest story nowadays? Actually, the story of China is the biggest uh, story in China. So I think everything uh, are out there. Uh, the thing is uh, we need to break up some uh, uh, institutional barriers or how to uh, change our uh, perceptions and uh, mindset. And uh, in the final analysis, I am quite optimistic. I think uh, Madam Chen, uh, uh, mention the issue of institutional thing. Uh, when talking about institutions, we were uh, we have been quite uh, casual, not very serious. Uh, if our debate goes nowhere, everybody will say it's an institution thing. Actually, of course, uh, it's a real factor. The institution is a real factor between the China Dreams Factory. Well, up to now, we have reached consensus on several issues. Uh, one is the large uh, market in China is uh, tried attractive to the content producers in the U.S. and Europe. And plus, uh, we have growing number of talents like uh, Mr. Gong, Zou, Gong uh, to spend a huge amount of money buying those stuff. Well, for the Chinese products going abroad, there are very few. Well, I think over the last 200 years, uh, uh, we were we have learned that a large country has to be grown with a large media. It seems that the time is not here, it's not around. So the Chinese media entertainment industry is still at a very weak uh, position right now. Well, uh, Rigan, uh, you have been doing uh, for the last 20 years, you have been working uh, the broadcasting sector uh, within the uh, government-funded uh, uh, institutions. Uh, actually, Shanghai Media Communications, uh, you are the youngest president. Uh, you are the 33 for, uh, as the president of the Shanghai Media Communications Center. Now you have turned to investment. Well, uh, the media is in uh, Europe and US, as far as I know. Uh, well, we don't want to touch on the uh, R&B issue. Actually, many contents uh, are not quite uh, expensive. Well, in your plan for a dream factory, 
are you going to make some ac quick acquisitions, especially in the U.S. market? Uh, so what do you want to buy on the U.S. market? Uh, of course, it's always been on our mind. Uh, we have never been, we have never tried to avoid those issues. For the overseas acquisition is part of an important strategy. As I said, uh, the media technology, uh, we have made some investments in some U.S. companies. Now we have turned to the U.S. Uh, production companies because in, in the Brit the Britain is a quite creative, it's a leading country in the uh, creativity and the overseas sports uh, business, uh, we are going to make uh, to do something. Well, coming back to the question you raised, uh, I would like to say the following things. Uh, whether there will be some world class media companies I in the years to come. Well, we have to, we need to have a criteria. For instance, uh, the market value. And because China has a large value uh, and also the uh, PE, uh, there will be some large companies, domestic companies in other. Uh, it is, it will be more, uh, it has, I think uh, these uh, prices will be higher than uh, some of the international companies due to its large market. Well, on the other side of the coin, uh, the meat, uh, the distribution and coverage of your products all over the world uh, will reach this that level, world class level. Uh, there are two things. One is a technology issue, one, and the other is an operations. Today, everybody is con confident, uh, ambitious. Uh, they have been thinking of uh, making some bold uh, initiatives. We have, we, well, uh, on the technolo technolo uh, technology level, uh, some of the uh, there are some uh, technologies behind the creativity. Uh, there must be a system. All the format or the content format uh, need to have uh, technologies. Of course, the software can be rendered. Well, the format has to be systematic. Therefore, we uh, need to have some uh, high tech behind those stuff. That is the problem we have. I'd like to give you a simple example. For sports contents, why is that uh, sports contents from abroad is so expensive? And even uh, for the Le Shu, when they purchase those contents, it's very expensive. It's because for like uh, sports contents for NBA, it has reached a very high level, and there's technologies behind it. And uh, before we know that there are only two sections in one basketball match, but now it has become four sections. There's a lot of sponsorships and advertisements in between. So overall speaking, you can see a very complete business model behind it. Therefore, we also need that. And China has a long way to go in terms of building such a business model. Rigang, I would like to follow up. You just mentioned about format. Well, during the past four to five years, whether it's for the China's Voice or other TV series, basically it's a copy uh, from the TV uh, programs from uh, America and the UK. So in China, we there is no lack of creativity or innovation, but why is that we cannot come up with such a program model or the content that is attractive to, you know, um, manufacturers or people from the U.S. and from abroad? Why is that we cannot come up with such a format or content? Well, I don't know. Well. Well, I think we need a process. As a matter of fact, we have spent a lot of money in purchasing a lot of copyrights. But what we are purchasing is not just the copyrights. We are purchasing a lot of things behind it. Well, for example, for the China's Voice, I'm very familiar with the home producing team. And they are a group of excellent people. And 
I usually talk to them. So after you purchase the copyright, what is the good thing about it? And one of the um, teacher, Na Ying, told me that while we are producing the content, we do not have a menu, we do not have a guideline. And those guidelines are very valuable. And Na Ying gave me one example. So one of the foreign producers, when he is standing on the stage, well, for the Chinese producer, um, usually we use the cliché of telling a very tragic personal stories or family stories, which makes the audience cry. And when they cry, they forgot all, what is the purpose of the program. And so once when a person comes up with a tragic personal story, the foreign producers say, cut, we should stop telling all those tragic personal stories. We should start to talk about your dreams in music. By doing that, it creates value for the program. And I think that is very important. So in this process of learning, I think that we will realize that um, we need to be more professional we need to learn from um, those foreign producers like uh, also we know that some of the Korean producers who are doing very well in China and I think that the process can be a very simple one we can learn from the Korean team well at the very beginning we learn from Taiwan team ta uh, team from Taiwanese uh, they know how to produce the program and currently we're learning from uh, producer producing teams from the States and Korea so I think that this learning process can allow us to have a much deeper understanding of the concept and process behind it and I think this knowledge will be beneficial for our future well Gong Yu, I would like to follow up what you said is very correct. On the other hand, you need to see that in the legal protection, we do not have any um, legal protection on this format or idea. And to create such a legal protection is very important and it really determines whether Chinese contents will be able to go global. Well, yes indeed. It's not just enough to spend three million to five million US dollars to buy a copyright from the States. However, um, even though we introduce those formats into China, there's no protection of those formats. And then secondly, we know that there is uh, technology contents behind those formats. We, can, we want to purchase it, we want to follow the uh, guidelines, but there's a lot of copycats watching and they all want to copy your format so that uh, enabling legal environment is very important for a healthy development of the Chinese content. If we talk about going global when we cooperate with uh, content producers in the States and other uh, Western countries, you also need to respect their legal requirements. Well, for Gong Yu, especially in recent years, you've purchased a lot of content in Aichi and also the price has been increasing so for local content, uh, we have heard from Li Jing and Rei Gang, they, uh, the local contents still face a lot of obstacles in terms of legal protection and um, vicious competition. So in order to create a healthy local content, you need to cultivate a team, you need an enabling environment so that the content can go global, right? So yes, I think that the going global plans has already started. And uh, we are mainly talking about four contents, like TV series and, and um, um, uh, other daily live shows and uh, automatic uh, automation and I think the content has a very close relationship with the platform and therefore we need a uh, professional teamwork five years ago we hire those people who are working in small um, producers private producers 
And then three years ago, we started to recruit those famous producers in um, large TV stations. And now we want to work with the best talents. And I think that this is a very positive development trend and this is a necessary process. Because currently we are in the second round of a new content development. In 1998, we saw the first develop development of the new content. And um, at the very beginning, there is a honeymoon um, period between the different people who are working in the industry, for example, journalists and then other uh, professionals. And then after the honeymoon period, they start to compete and then have conflicts. And then uh, in starting from 2006 to from 2007, the editors of newspapers, they start to enter the new media. And then after a decades of development, the chief editors, the chief of newspapers, they realize that um, the um, the internet has a high potential, and for the new content media, it will, you know, go through the same process. At the very beginning, it would be very difficult, but to maintain the originality is very important. We, I want to recruit those people who have the passion and dream, and then those people will develop and grow. And then with the growth of the industry, the more, more experienced and senior people will also join. And secondly, either for Hollywood or for the content from abroad, the impact on the local content is much less than the TV and cinema. Because for TV station and cinema, it's a physical asset. And you know, for the cinema, it will always uh, broadcast the, the uh, most popular content. But for the internet, it's more like a comprehensive and overall platform. So it can be much more, um, it can be uh, customized or individualized. And those uh, customization and individualization can provide huge potentials for development. For example, three years ago, those original contents, we invest five million RMBs for one season of program, but we lost. And after three years, we invest, but we are uh, making profits. I still want to leave about 10 minutes uh, for the Q&A, so you will have your say, uh, maybe during the question time, would that be okay? 呃，我们现在开始有呃，可能十分钟的提问时间，好吧？So uh, we have ten minutes for Q and A, and we will just ask the questions in a row, and then we answer them all together. This gentleman. My question is for Mr. Li and Mr. Gong. We've talked about the purchase of content as well as the market development. We talk about that a lot, but there's one thing that we should also pay attention to, media technology. Netflix, when it come out with the House of Car, actually it used a lot of big data and anal analysis to realize what the viewers really want. And also in football, in NBA, it used a lot of big data company, work with big data companies, so they, it carry out a lot of um, data analysis. And also for, um, you know, for the, uh, so I would like to know about your views on this regard. So you've mentioned that for the um, content distribution and the use of big data, it's entering in a lot of uh, the content area, also including sports. As a matter of fact, in the US and in UK, there are a lot of small independent companies who have worked as an ecosystem who are providing this kind of uh, data analysis. Um, so how do you view the, the, the role played by this kind of company? So my question is that in a bra, maybe the producer system is the core, it has a very uh, independent producer 
system. But in China, the producer doesn't necessarily play the core role. And in China, we seen um, that the producer system is completely different from that abroad. So what's your opinion on the um, current situation of the producer system in China? I would like to ask a question. So the traditional media complain a lot about the censor censorship. And on the internet, a lot of the uh, TV series who have avoid such kind of a censorship. So for the future development, would you ever worry about the censorship? So one more question. Last question. So I've seen a lot of media friends. And I believe that um, you are also interested in your personal development. The overall Chinese environment is in a change. So either in the system or outside the system, there's a lot of risk. So for all of you, the six panelists, what would be your suggestion in the dealing with this kind of risk? So Ray Gang, I would like to give you one minute so I think uh, you are in the best position to talk about censorship because you've been working in the system before. I think we don't have to be afraid of censorship. And there are some very basic principles in the censorship system that you can follow because the objective is to ensure national security, is to ensure public safety, and it's the same in elsewhere. So we don't need to exaggerate those problems. I'd like to give you an example. So the dream or uh, when it or uh, hope to uh, build up a joint venture with me and I asked the authority whether it's possible. And uh, they told me that for all the uh, animation that has been imported into China, all those things has passed censorship because all the uh, programs and contents that it produced, it um, champions positive values. So we need to look at the positive aspects. So Li Jing, there's a question about the difficulties faced by the media also in terms of career, career development. I think they should have moved much faster. They should have moved much earlier. I think the most important thing So you've asked a question about producer system. I think no matter what kind of problems that you consider, you should consider what do you want to do. If I can choose again, probably today I will choose to join ICE instead of becoming an independent producer. Because at that time, I don't know what kind of choices I have. And also, I can also join a Hong Kong University. Yes, uh, for uh, the young uh, people, the world is very ferocious. Uh, you will not only compete with the talents, domestic talents, Actually, you're competing with the talents all over the world. So you have to have your own talents. So as to cope with the uh, significant changes. For instance, you can write, uh, you understand some technology, uh, you can uh, operate on different platforms, and also you need to be sophisticated. You understand finance, economic, economy, and uh, geography, I think you are a very good talent. And of course, you need to have your own strengths. That is why you are, will be needed. And that is the world as it is. And your, world, your opportunities are great. So if you are talented, you will be needed everywhere. Well, my advice is you will never complain. And uh, we need uh, something positive. Well. Well, you have the uh, power, the economic power, financial power, and you have the technology. I think what you are lacking actually is confidence, more confidence to export your culture, uh, your values, uh, and, and to confront your values and culture with other cultures and other values. And I, I, I think there is no reason why uh, you should not become you know, a very uh, important soft power.
Well, on the question of big data, and this is a means. Uh, of course, it's better to have it. Well, it doesn't mean that uh, you can produce a good uh, content with such means. And uh, actually, uh, so uh, the Hollywood Times, there were no big data. Uh, in the second season of the series, they have their uh, the big data is there, and that is the way they can maintain, keep uh, competitive. Well, because uh, we started with the discussion on the China Dreams Factory. Now we need to come back to the reality from dreams. Well, I gave 10 seconds to each of our panelists. If uh, you uh, are thinking of uh, creating a China Dreams Factory, well, uh, what do you think must be there while still are not there? From, from Oliver. Oliver. Hmm. Creativity and confidence. Encourage creativity. Um, uh, have a framework to encourage creativity everywhere. I think uh, boldness, cor courage, everything is there. You need to seize it. I think in time, because we were too fast in the past. We did uh, what had been done by other countries uh, in 100 years. Of course, we need to be tolerant uh, with our times. Uh, we need to be patient, especially when it comes to culture. And uh, you have to produce something when time is there. Well, uh, the middle link, uh, to extend, I, I'm going to do uh, the extension of the cultural content. Uh, how, what can we do to turn the fans into our consumers? Like uh, the Japan and Korea are very advanced in those areas. I think we will turn that into reality. Well, we have, we have to have faith in uh, young generations. They are going to create a, a systems. Well, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Uh, of course, we are several minutes behind our schedule. Uh, I, we are talking about the dreams or dream factories in China. Actually, we are more concerned with the uh, reality facing us. We hope uh, next year or the year uh, after the next, when we will be talking about uh, the dreams, at least as part of the dreams will be realized. Thank you very much.